Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of The County Seat. I'm your host, Chad Booth. I want to start today's program by asking you a question. What is the most valuable thing that may be out lying on the floor of the West Desert near Delta, Utah? Well, if you guessed minerals, you'd be on the right track. If you guessed potash, you would hit it square on the head. A very rare form of potash exists out there in the desert. The challenge is, how do you get it out and keep all the players happy? Well, that's our topic today, and we'll start with a little background on the topic. Here's Malia Bascom. Riddle me this. What do the Great Salt Lake, Utah Lake, and Severe Lake have in common? Well, they are the remnants of the prehistoric Lake Bonneville. The unique geology that was formed under Lake Bonneville and the collection of minerals that were deposited by its waters have created an economic opportunity that involves the brackish water that lies beneath Severe Lake. Severe Lake is 30 miles southwest of Delta, Utah, where you would typically find a dry lake bed. But because of the wet year we had last year, right now you'll find about 6 to 12 inches of water on the lake, which has allowed for today's expedition. Right now we're in the exploration phase, and what we're doing is recovering just a small core from the lake bed in order to uh, analyze it. Once we get the core out, then all we're doing is we're putting in a, a standard screen, PVC screen, so that we can go back into that hole and get the brine samples out of that hole. Because really what we're after here is this brine. Peak Minerals, the company that recently leased 123,000 acres of Severe Lake from the BLM and the School and Institutional Trust Lands Administration, hopes to find a rare form of potash. Potash is a fertilizer. There are two versions of potash, KCL, muriate of potash, or K2SO4, sulfate of potash. K2SO4 is used on, on the, what are called the high value crops, fruits, vegetables, that sort of thing. K2SO4 is the form that we're producing. Currently, there are only three places in the entire world that produce K2SO4. One of them is located on the Great Salt Lake and has been producing potash since the 1970s. So, now that we know what potash is used for, how do you turn salt water into fertilizer? We're going to use this combination of trenches and pumps to lift the water to the surface where we'll spread it out in concentration ponds. The brine will move from one pond to another, eventually achieving a very high concentration. In the final pond, the sun will evaporate all of the water. We'll scrape up what's left, put it into a processing plant where we purify it using a little bit of fresh water and some heat. And out the other end will come a number of products, principally K2SO4. Aside from what they're seeking to mine, it's the benefits that a project like this provides places like Millard County, the surrounding communities, and schools. Economic activity of this size would have a great impact on our county with you know the folks that we employ and, and the tax revenue that would be generated for the county and for our school system. By the end of this fiscal year, we anticipate we'll have generated $2 million in royalty rates from potash, and that's before this project comes online, so that will just add to that. Despite the obvious Thanks, benefits guys. to the community, there have going? been some concerns about dust and other impacts to the environment. Throughout the whole process, we'll look at very closely the dust issues. What is the possibility of dust out on the lake bed? What's the history of dust on the lake bed? The exploration activities and what dust might be created from their activities with exploration, they were able to put together a dust plan which we found acceptable. That dust isn't so much coming off of the Severe Lake surface, it's coming off of the Wawa and places further south. One thing that I would point out about the Severe Dry Lake is, is that it, it has a natural reclamation process in being a lake bed. Essentially what we've really uh, worked hard to do on this whole project is, is uh, to minimize our footprint out here as far as the work that we're doing. Just the water action and standard erosion will completely reclaim what we're doing as we go. And then again, we'll be reclaiming all these drill holes when we're through. So uh, essentially by the time we're done, there'll be almost no, no record of us being here. We think we have a very strong project, one that's environmentally friendly, one that will be a great benefit to the community and also producing a product that's of great value to the world in general. For the county seat, I'm Malia Bascom. 
Thank you, Malia, for that report. We will take a further look at mineral development in the West Desert and the impact it has on the local communities when we look at potash development in Millard County. We will be back with more of the county seat in just a minute. You see a snapshot and you wish you could make it real. You glance at a calendar and imagine you could step inside. You see adventure and long to join in. In Kane County, Utah, there's nothing to hold you back. Land, water, air, from the Red Rocks to the top of the world. A motorized adventure to the style of the Old West. Experience the true meaning of freedom. Kane County, Utah. Come play in our backyard. What brings you to St. George? Business meeting. Staying long? Just here for the day. Quick in and out. Hey, I just landed. Going to meet in a half an hour. Not too bad. Why so fast? Stay any longer? We'll run out of things to do. On second thought. <sighs> Buddy, something's come up. I'm going to need another hour. Can we push the meeting till noon? <laughs> I am definitely going to need to reschedule. Holy... Sit back, relax, and enjoy your 45-minute flight to Salt Lake. How'd that meeting go? I should have booked a weekend. State of Utah School and Institutional Trust Lands Administration. CITLA manages 3.5 million acres of Utah lands with the express purpose of furthering the education of Utah students while promoting local industry, oil and gas, even residential development, all at the same time. Through the careful use of trust lands, we distributed more than $22 million to Utah schools last year. The State of Utah School and Institutional Trust Lands Administration, building the state's permanent school fund. <laughs> 